Hi there everybody and welcome back to AP Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be wrapping up Unit 7. In this video we're going to be looking at Topic 12 which is about the common ion effect. So in the last video we learned about KSP and how we can calculate the solubility of a substance. So in that video, we were focusing on how much of a substance, specifically an ionic compound, could dissolve in water, in distilled water. Well, notice that sometimes we don't have distilled water or pure distilled water as our solvent. Sometimes we're trying to dissolve a solute into water that already has an ion in there. So let's imagine that we have calcium sulfate. Now calcium sulfate isn't that uh, soluble to start with, but let's imagine that we have a saturated solution of calcium sulfate, CaSO4. Now, like we learned in the last video, all saturated solutions are at equilibrium. So that's why we have this double-headed arrow here to show that we have an equilibrium going on. Now, what's going to happen if we toss in some solid sodium sulfate, what's going to happen here? Well, we know that this is kind of an application of Le Chatelier's principle. We know that sodium sulfate is going to you know, dissociate into its ions, and some of that sulfate is going to disturb this equilibrium. And like we learned back in the Le Chatelier's principle section, if we add in sulfate, in fact, any product, it's going to force the equilibrium to go in the opposite direction. In this case, it's going to shift toward the reactant side. So what we're going to observe is calcium sulfate solid being formed. And this is happening because the fact that we've added sulfate ion reduces the ability of this solution to dissolve that calcium sulfate. Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples where we have to consider the common ion effect. Here we have a multiple choice question. A chemistry student has a saturated solution of silver iodide in a beaker. Which of the following solids, when added to the solution, would result in a solid precipitate of silver iodide being formed? Now, as we think about this, let's write out the equation for the dissociation of silver iodide. So once again, we have this saturated solution. And if we're going to form the solid precipitate of silver iodide, like it says in the problem here, then we're going to need something that's going to shift this equilibrium toward the reactant side. Now, a couple ways to do that would be to add in some silver ions. And as it turns out, I don't see any of these four choices that have silver ions in them, although that would work. Also, we could add iodide ions. Now, I do see one choice that has iodide in it, and it's choice D, potassium iodide. And so that's the answer. If you were to add some potassium iodide to this, that iodide would you know, disturb the equilibrium and shift the equilibrium back toward the reactant side, making silver iodide precipitate out. And by the way, in the process of doing so, the concentration of iodide would go down and the concentration of the silver ions would go down as well because it's making the silver iodide in the process. Now, let's try one other question here. It says calcium fluoride is very soluble in pure distilled water, but it is less soluble in fluoridated tap water and almost completely insoluble in benzene. Explain these observations. Well, we know that the solubility is going to be less whenever there's fluoride ion already in the distilled water dissolved. You know, a lot of fluorides, it says most, not all, but a lot of fluorides are soluble in distilled water. However, the fact that there's fluoride ions in tap water limits its ability to dissolve as much calcium fluoride due to that common ion effect. It's almost like there is a capacity for fluoride ions to be dissolved in that water. And guess what? The fluoride is already you know, taking up some of that capacity. Uh, and how about the benzene? Well, the fact is ionic compounds 
are what we might call very polar in nature, which means they're going to be almost completely insoluble in a nonpolar solvent like benzene. You can uh, make calculations with this. Most likely you'll have questions uh, kind of like these to answer on the AP exam. Hey, I hope you learned something about the common ion effect and equilibrium in these videos. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you're looking for a comprehensive practice program for not just unit seven, but for all of AP Chemistry, I'd love to encourage you to go over to ultimatereviewpacket.com and check out the materials I've produced for you. I have full-length practice exams. I have hundreds of practice questions for you, multiple choice, free response. Uh, this is going to help you to get that five on the AP exam. The price is very reasonable, and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and hope to see you in the next video.